How you doing guys? I've been getting a lot of calls from past clients and a couple of the other charter captains asking me how I rig up my rods for Detroit River. And uh, I do it a couple different ways. If I'm, if I'm jigging for myself on my own rods, I tie my braid directly to my, my jig head. Now if I'm rigging up clients rods, I do it a little bit different. And what I do is, I'll show you how to do this. I take about two foot of my 12 pound floral. It, it doesn't have to be precise. And I'll tie this to the jig head. And all I use is just a simple clinch knot to get this floral to the jig head. You know, braid you're using Palomar or Trilings or whatever else. I just flip this around a few times. You know, get 10 wraps on it. Put it through. I'm getting old. Moisten it, pull down. I don't even cut that tag end off. It's good enough. It's got a half inch tag end. On this end, I use a number eight get it open. I use a number eight swivel. You know you want a you want a good quality swivel. I don't horse around with the the little gold ones or anything. I'm sure they work, but I'm so set on the, the VMC swivels that that's just what I use. I mean, that's what works. They, I've never had them fail me. And like I said, they're small, tiny. They're number eights. And I do the same thing. I just put a clinch knot up top, or fisherman's knot. You know, give it 10 wraps. Pull it through. Moisten it up. Lost my tag end. I'm getting old, I can't see as good as I used to, and these little swivels are tiny. So there we go. And he's got a about a half inch, half of an inch of uh, tagging on him too. So there you go. I got two foot lead to my jig head from the swivel to here. What I, what I do on my rods is I got these number ones. I always use the size number one. These came from Frank's in the bulk. And I'll put a Palomar knot in this one because it's braid. You can't use a fisherman's knot with braid. It'll pull right out. Especially when you hook a walleye. So I'll tie this up. The Palomar. go trim my braid off now my braid I will trim pretty close I'd even trim it closer than that so I don't want that braid to get bound up in the tag end of the, the leader I made so anyways If you run the boat like I do, I'm always up front, in Detroit especially because you got such a current, you get clients that either get it or they don't get it. You'll get clients that lose one jig head a day and you'll get clients that lose 40 jig heads a day. They just can't, they just can't get it. Um, they start getting frustrated and then they let it drag and the, you lose a lot of jig heads. It's part of the game. So anyways, I hook this little swivel onto my little cross lock snap. It's a fuzz in there. And I, I tie up probably 
30 of these a night. Okay, so you got them hooked onto your cross lock snap, to your swivel, and now you're jigging. And uh, you're going long, and all of a sudden your client's snagged up. Rule one of my boat I don't go back for lead. I don't turn around for that lead head that is 50 cents to a dollar. I'm not reeling everybody up, messing everybody's drift up to go back for it. There's no way, especially on Detroit. Any body of water, I don't go back for lead. It stays at the bottom. <clears throat> so, your Palomar knot's not going anywhere out of your crosslock snap on your braid. These are just tied with fisherman's knots, which are gonna, that's gonna hold any size fish you got. I mean, we've pulled in sturgeon on Detroit with that. So when you get it hooked up and you go to snap it, you know, you hold your spool and snap it. It 99.9% .9 of the time always snaps at that swivel. And on the dash of my boat, I have a little cup that I have my clients put this swivel into. And you got to make sure they put it in there because these will get in your billage and it's not good. So they put that in the cup up on the dash. And then when we get done at night, I go home. I cut strips of floral. I take the little cup of barrel swivels. I retie them. And then what I do, I either use a pool noodle or one of these. Pool noodle works a little better than one of them because there's nothing really hooked to. So... I just stick them on after I retie them, and I fold that, that little swivel underneath, and it stays on like that, and I'll do four or five of these full every day before I head out on my charters. I do them at night before bed, and that way I do not have to come off of that trolling motor and lose control of my boat to tie up somebody's rig for them back there because they keep losing jig heads, and uh, that makes it a lot easier for me. And, you know, no matter what their experience, they can, un they can undo one of these and snap this back on. And they're in business that quick. Nobody's got to take time out to babysit them or anything like that. So that's how I do it, guys. Just remember to pick up your swivels. Put them in your, put them in your little cup that you got on a dash like I do because... They will get in your village and raise hell. So that's my tip for today. I hope uh, I hope a lot of people see this video because I've been getting a lot of calls on it, mainly from past clients asking, um, "Hey, how did you do that?" And uh, now I showed you. It'll it'll just make your life a lot easier. And if you're a charter captain, it makes you you'll know what I mean. It just simplifies everything. Um, the less, the less time you have to get off of that boat motor to, to tie anybody's stuff, the better. Um, when I do charters on my boat, I don't net fish. Clients net all their own fish. If they lose their fish, that's their fault, not mine. This is how, this, that's how big of a stickler I am about leaving that bow mount. Um, I run with a foot pedal, not my, not my necklace or my fob. And, uh... Like when I get a fish, I'm up front jigging two rods to keep that boat straight. When I get a fish, I swing my fish back, they net it, dump it in the boat, pitch my jig out, and we keep fishing, and that boat's always running straight. So. Thanks for watching, guys. That's my tip for today. See you on Detroit River.